Hello everyone, Bigfoot here. Today's Thursday, which means I'm reviewing another piece of gear of mine. Today, I'll be reviewing my favorite piece that I took with me on the Appalachian Trail, and that was my Black Diamond Trail Pro Shock trekking poles. <laughs> Well, you heard me say that my trekking poles were my favorite piece of gear on the trail. There's no lie to that. The first thing that I loved about these was just the multifunctionality that I had with them. These served as my tent poles in addition to my trekking poles. The second, with using my technique on these poles, I was able to ascend and descend mountains so much faster than if I was not using any trekking poles or maybe just walking sticks. Now, I'll be talking about my special technique that I actually used that made these really effective in another video that I'll be releasing on Saturday, but, but that part was just fantastic. And the third thing, these poles help prevent so many injuries that, uh, that really I was vulnerable on the trail to. I can't tell you how many times that these things saved me from rolling my ankle and just distributing the weight from everything that is on my upper body to my poles instead of distributing it to my lower body. So uh, these things were just fantastic. But the reason why I went with the specific model was just because of the durability. I've hiked with lots of different trekking poles in my life, and I have found that there was not a trekking pole that I've had that have actually withstood the test of the miles and the abuse that I put on them quite like these poles. Now, when I got to the end of the trail, Katahdin, I actually had one of my poles that had broke in a couple different places. And that was really due to me slipping on a rock and actually just falling underneath me and breaking my fall. And, uh, but I, I will tell you, there are so many times that I had thought I was going to break these shafts and, and they just withstood very well. Now, these are made of aluminum, the shafts that is. I have used some trucking poles out there that uh, have the, uh, the carbon fiber and I had two different pairs of them, both from REI, and I actually shattered one of them and then the other one of the, uh, the ends broke like my second day that I was using it with my technique that I use with my trekking poles. Now the technique that I use does put a lot of abuse on these things. And, and again, that's the reason why I had to have a really durable, solid trekking pole. Now these come in at 20 ounces. Each one weighs 10 ounces. So it's, it's a little bit heavier than what you're gonna see with a lot of those carbon fiber poles out there. But again, for me, the, uh, the weight didn't really matter. It was more the durability. Now the features on this pole that I really love, the first is this flick lock mechanism. This flick lock mechanism was just outstanding. I never had a problem with this slipping or collapsing while I was hiking. I've had some other power locks that I've owned in the past, the power lock systems that have slipped and collapsed. And the flick lock system is so much better than the twist lock. I will never ever own another pair of trekking bulls that have the twist lock. Uh, the problem with those, they just get stuck all the time and they collapse all the time. So uh, that was a, an essential component that I needed with my trekking poles was something that had a power lock. But these flick locks, I was just really impressed with. The other thing that I loved about the flick lock mechanism was in, during the course of time, the numbers that are usually on your trekking poles start to disappear because of the abuse from the shafts and collapsing the poles, and it just rubs up against the, the numbers and the lettering, and it just wears off. And the trekking poles that I use on the Appalachian Trail, when I actually summited Katahdin, you could still make out the numbers on the side here, and I was just really impressed. So that was something that I really loved about these as well. The, uh, the numbers are really helpful because you know exactly where to set your pole length at. So anyway, the flick lock were just amazing. Now, another feature that I loved about these trekking poles was the, the dual grips that you have right here. You have two different areas that you actually can hold on your trekking pole to. You've got the top grip up here, which is, you know, your, your handle, but then you also have a foam handle on the bottom. And this was really helpful because when I would be descending, I would always usually grip onto the top foam pad. And when I was ascending, a lot of times I would actually hold on to the grips right here through my strap. So it was really nice being able to have two different areas that you can actually hold on to. Now I love these straps. They were really durable, easy to adjust. I did have some issues with them slipping near the end. Right now, 
I, I don't really have that issue at all. These are brand new poles, but I would say once I got about 14, 1500 miles in on them, they would start to slip through the miles of the day and I probably would have to adjust them maybe two, three times a day. Um, I, I just kind of got used to it. Now, these trekking poles have the anti-shock on them, which you know really takes away some of the vibrations and abuse that you would have normally on your wrist or your elbows. Now, one issue that I had with the anti-shock mechanism here is somewhere in Pennsylvania, I actually had my shocks bottom out. I don't know if that's really the term that you use, but basically what happened was the, uh, the top of the shock actually, because of all of the abuse and the pressure that I was putting on top of it, it, it just basically got stuck. And there was a gap in the shock valve right here where you have this top of the lip here, uh, just below my, my grip handle. And there was probably maybe, I don't know, a couple millimeter gap. And basically my uh, shock mechanism was stuck. And for the first, I don't know, maybe day, I couldn't figure out how to reset that. I tried to put a lot of pressure on it and punch it and all kinds of things. And, and it didn't work. And it was just really annoying. What I ended up finding out though is if you actually just put pressure on both sides and push in really hard, it actually would release and go back to its original form. Now that probably happened to me about five times on the trail. So that was one thing that I didn't like about these, but I would say the advantage of having these outweighed the disadvantage of that issue. All right, one thing that I forgot to mention about the straps, you actually have one strap that says R for right and one that says L for left. These letters did wear off, you know, I would say somewhere probably a couple, three months in, but it was kind of nice just to know which one was right, which one was left, because I got used to it and I don't know, it kind of conformed, I guess, to to uh, to my hand. At least that's what it felt like. It felt different when I had them swapped. I don't know, it was weird. But but I did like having to know which one was right, which one was left. And the uh, the flex tips on the bottom here, these flex tips I ended up having to change about four times and that wasn't because of the design of this. It was because of the technique I actually used uh, when I was using my trekking poles. Uh, I will, again, I'll talk about that in, in another video, but the, uh, the flex tips were really simple to take off and to put back on. So I, I really like that piece of these as well. And with all of the abuse that I went through my entire journey, I was just really impressed they actually lasted the entire time. So I strongly recommend these poles. They, uh, they are a favorite of mine, and if you look on Amazon, once in a while, they'll have an incredible discount on these. The pair that I got right here, I actually got for $79 about three weeks ago, and when I looked on Amazon today, I think they're coming in at about $97. Normally, these are $140, $130 trekking poles, so Amazon does have some great uh, price on these if you just wait it out and wait till they're on sale. All right, guys, well, that wraps up my review of my Black Diamond Trail Pro Shock trekking poles. I love these things. I give them five stars. I reviewed a lot of these online, and a lot of the reviews came somewhere around the 4.8 out of five star range. The uh, There was one review that someone wrote that had the same issue with me with the shocks, and she actually called Black Diamond, and they sent her a brand new pair, no questions asked, and let her keep the old pair for spare parts, which I thought was really cool. So that wraps it up. I would love to hear from all of you what pair of trekking poles that you use or if you are biased towards one that you really love and we can kind of just share that around. That would be awesome. Stay tuned for my next sighting and remember to always follow Bigfoot.